The trigger for this research question was a debate that we had uh, together with my colleagues about two phenomena. On the one hand, an increased uh, number of welfare NGOs in different communities, and at the same time, an increased level of income inequality. We were puzzled by the fact that there were organizations that were intended to reduce inequality and as their number were growing, inequality was also growing. So we wanted to understand better what was the role of welfare NGOs in society and what were the conditions under which these type of organizations were more effective. So we challenged the traditional wisdom that the greater the number of welfare NGOs is better for reducing inequality. Our model basically argues is that there's at the beginning, as the density of welfare NGO increases in a community, this is beneficial in terms of reducing inequality. However, these improvements in inequality are not forever, so they have a limit. And what we actually found is the limit. There's a point after which the increased number of welfare NGOs in a given community actually increases inequality. And the reason is that they start competing for resources. One of the beauties of doing phenomenon-driven research is that they tend to be very practical. So for the first case, for welfare nonprofit managers, I think the message is very clear that they cannot overlook competition. The second element is to really look at the institutional structure and what are the key actors in that community. Because the institutional actor of a given community is going to have a deep impact in your ability to reduce inequality.